Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. Yesterday, we left off on a raid of something like, what was it, like 200 elves, 150 elves, something crazy like that. I've given them a little bit of time to try and tidy up things the best they can. We've, we've literally got, like, one more weapon to haul back to the base, things like that. The corpses have all been hauled into the spider light as well, so we've done a pretty decent job of tidying up. We also left Delta and Edward Crosby crafting us some... Cataphract armor, and to be honest, they've done a really, really good job. We've got three sets of Cataphract armor, and then we've got two helmets. One of the helmets I bought from a trader that turned up while they were in the middle of tidying up, so that came in pretty helpful. I really should limit the bill, actually. Oh, no, we did it until X, didn't we? Okay, that's fine. That should work. So they're currently in the middle of doing that. They seem to be a little bit caught up in jobs, might be the best way to phrase it. They're absolutely all over the place with it. During the meantime, as well, they have finished one level of the laser weapon research the final one, then, is the 16,000-point Ultra Tech laser weapon, which I don't even know that we're ever going to get up to, to be honest with you. But we'll let them carry on as they are right now. So, a couple of things I wanted to uh, just do for tidy tidiness sake is, is basically put down an electric smelter to start off with, because we have a ridiculous amount of weapons right now. Um, the majority of which are steel, so could end up being a decent amount, but obviously we don't want the smelter to be so crazy that we end up melting down our own gear. So instead, what I think we'll do is... How, how can I make it so that we'll smelt down only the steel gear that the enemy gets? Because, let's say, for example, we operate on... I don't know, we operate on Sharamus. His steel axe will be hauled back to the stockpile, and we want to avoid that being smelted. But to be honest, I'm not sure there's a way to do it. But, of course, we want to smelt down all of the steel axes the enemy bring with them. So there's, there's unfortunately no middle ground, as far as I know. Um, so instead, what I'm building is obviously the, the electric smelter over here. And instead, we'll not set the weapons to high priority hauling in fact we could even go as far to um we could even go as far to leave a little bit of a weapons locker free in the hospital and they should haul it to that and then we could just get a weapons straight back from the hospital anyway long story short we, we should be able to set up a different furnace here to to sort that out at some stage one thing i've done as well is i've taken the settlements off of tithe for the time being to buy some profit because i noticed that we've failed in defense quite frequently we've basically had a couple of our colonies drop down by uh, quite significant levels here. I think across the board, we've lost like three or four levels in the past couple of episodes where we've been using our military as an offensive force to obviously help, help defend our base rather than defend their own settlements. So instead, I'm going to probably invest back into those for a while. Oh my God, the elf pond. Um, shouldn't take long to decompose. Obviously, they're sat outside in the rain in a pond. But I want to use some of that silver to actually reinvest back into it. And, and one of the traders uh, during... Uh, the tidy up time just before I start recording. One of the traders actually had tech prints. Now it was for psych focus weaponry, which wasn't su super useful. Oh man, that looks good. But it was obviously still relevant. It might be worth saving up just in case we come across one of those tech prints. But I don't think there's really anything else that we particularly need at this stage. All the tech prints we wanted to craft for Sharamus to give him the best gear, we just happened to get. You know, obviously yesterday we got the was it the virus killer, and then we ended up buying some of the other stuff anyway. So. There's not really much else we want. It might be good to rip off his arms at some stages, power arms, or replace those with with muscle wires and, and regular human arms. So give him back regular arms and then... Oh, that's quite good. And then give him muscle wires instead. That might be a bit more optimal um, now that we know the blunt damage doesn't work. But to be honest, it's, it's kind of just min-maxing at this stage of the game. So I want to get ready for full-blown military conquest of all the other settlements as soon as possible. I guess we better see what the Stellar Miner has as well. We've got 4,000 silver left over, so if we go and grab... Oh, we, we had another tax session as well from our colonies. We didn't get a super uh, useful amount of stuff. I think we got like 200 gold and 700 plasteel. But besides that, it ended up just being, as you can see there, a bulk of sky steel. Stellar Miner, do not sell, for whatever reason, sky steel, steel, uranium, all plasteel. Things you mine out the ground, they don't sell. Oh, they sell a load of gemstones. That's the issue with our massive mod pack we've got right, right now, is, is, of course, certain trade ships will lose value in that there's just so much extra shit added to them. Unless it's just a... Maybe it is just a trade ship that sells stone blocks normally? That'd be a bit strange. I ended up selling a lot of our uh, jade, lapis, whatever else as well, just to add up to our silver, because I figured it was more useful having it as silver rather than just gemstones. But realistically, we're probably never going to use. All right, let's use Delta to do our usual trick then. So let's call Empire Sphere. Second these guys can get over here, the better. What do you want to go for at this point? I guess mining companies again? Let's go for a mining company with Delta and then exotic goods trader from the androids. So, Anna Laura. Um, request a trade caravan. It's either exotic goods trader. Combat supplier is just going to sell us crap. Bear in mind, they're only a mid level technology. So, they, whenever the robots turn up, despite the fact they are futuristic sentient androids, they always turn up. Remember, we saw them with the, with the like revolvers, cowboy hats, that type of strange shit. 
So I guess we go for the exotic goods trader just in the hope that they bring something that might be useful. On each one of these racks, we have cataphract gear. We have uh, jumpsuits as well. Obviously, affects what is our movement speed, our work speed, 10% bonus. Then on the rest, we'll try and have a full set of marine armor plus the jumpsuits. I did try experimenting with having boots and gloves on them as well. The issue is if you've got any sort of non-humanoid arms or legs so for example the mutant arms or even sharamus's power arms you can't actually wear boots or gloves after that which is why i've specifically actually taken them off of edward crosby's crafting list too so it's it's a bit pointless it's basically the optimal gear we can really have for combat right now hey, hang on a minute why have we got a spare we've got spare cataphract armor oh i bet they started the job on one bench and then oh yeah look it's just this one out of four. Oh, if they're on the armor it actually doesn't count oh shit why does that not count as in storage? Oh, that's really annoying. Okay, I guess we'll just have to do it X times instead. So we'll spend that one. Um, cataphract helmet, we obviously don't need any more of either. Though we do have one spare cataphract armor. I guess we could make one more cataphract helmet and give it to pork. Go on then. Okay, that's a little annoying, but we'll 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 do exactly that. So let's go ahead and remove that from the list for the timing. Maybe we could make an entire lineup of cataphract armor. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? We only need another, what, seven sets? Well, not even that, because of course we have the armor already. So let's do it another... So we need seven more cataphract helmets and six more cataphract bodies, right? Let's do it. You know what? I said I wasn't going to, but we might as well commit to it, seeing as uh, seeing as we're kind of close now. So it's seven more helmets and then six more bodies. This is such a weird idea. Just the entire... I don't think we've ever had an entire colony of cataphract... Granted, it's not a massive colony, but the entire colony having... What? <laughs> All right. Yep, me too. Edward Crosby lost the trait Optimus. What? Why? Why? <laughs> I guess it's because he knows war. War is kind of looming over us. I have no idea why he would lose that randomly otherwise. Anyway, one thing I just noticed is, is a quest expired for a combined assault between our our towns. So so obviously Empire's Fear Towns, which does technically count as a separate faction, of course. And then... Those and they, they basically offered us a quest to join them in an attack against the Butto Citadel. Apparently they won it. So that which was uh, a settlement belonging to the Empire, as in the Empire, now belongs to Empire Sphere as well. So they've managed to... Our villagers from all these various towns... That is added by Dynamic Diplomacy, by the way. Um, they have managed to capture both of the Citadels now, which is quite fun. I actually wanted to check one of those out because I've never seen the Citadels added by the Cities mod. And I guess we won't be because they're now all allied. So today we do have a secret mission that, that's been kept uh, that's been kept below below public knowledge, so that it can be a, a stealth target to get vengeance against Upsa. I say get vengeance against Upsa. We're going to try and get Upsa back. So what we're building here is obviously we've got some spare drop pods. We're going to send Sharamus along with a couple of people as backup. Probably still gets knocked out a lot in Helosos. We're going to send those guys in drop pods over to the Orc settlement. And we're going to let Sharamus go butt wild on them. We're going to try and capture Upsa and bring him home. Fingers crossed he is actually there. It does say that he's there. Uh, he did join that faction. How did we see it last time? Was it like... um, Yeah, so there he is. He's part of the Covenant of Barn. So we need to go and raid the Covenant of Barn and get him back. So we're going to send a, a hit squad, essentially, via our drop pods to go and get him. I don't know if these drop pods can actually reach in hindsight. Um, let's make sure the fuel level is obviously up to maximum. What about this one? Is that one fine? Um, right, let's go ahead and make sure those are all cranked up as high as possible. There we go. And how far can we actually launch these? I'm just going to do a test. I guess we'll do a test fire just to see if that's uh, here. Send some... <laughs> send Sharam, that's fine. You can send an empty drop pod. We just have to do this. Um, yeah, it looks as if we can reach. Bear in mind, it is a small planet compared to the usual one. Okay. Right, so we can drop right in on them. Sharamus alone can probably deal with it. The reason I'm sending him with reinforcements is because if through some act of God, through some absolute miracle, say his bruises start stacking up again or something ridiculous like that, you know how Rimod is, I need two people there to be able to get him out of there. To be able to bring back the body so we can resurrect him once again. Now, as a sort of preemptive measure, a lot of people have been suggesting this on every episode. I actually saw the comment yesterday as well. Make sure that we've got the um, Lazarus serum ready. So that way, when he dies, it will automatically bring him back. And I even replied to that comment saying, maybe we should try him on Luciferium as well. Because we are capable of producing AI Persona calls. We just need to make sure we have a consistent amount of Plasteel coming in. That would be the only limiting factor. The issue is, if we put Sharamus on, on Luciferium and then we can't, can't guarantee the production of Luciferium, we could end up... We, we basically could end up with, with 
needing to resurrect him because it'll just straight up kill him, right? And then we'll have to resurrect him after that. So anyway, let's get him injected with the Lazarus mech and hopefully that'll be enough to... Oh, we've got two spare resurrects as well. Maybe we should take one with us in the drop pods as an emergency thing and then just carry it home if we don't use it. That actually might not be a bad idea. Um, can we make package survival meals as well? Because it's going to be a hell of a journey back. We can. Let's go ahead and make enough package survival meals then to last us the trip. Also, why have we not got... What? Oh, oh, he's, he's making fine meals from this one instead. No, we don't want you doing that. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the meals from this one. This thing, this thing I was scammed into buying. I didn't know exactly what it did. Right, so package survival meals do until we've got X, just in case we do more strikes like this in the future. Obviously, we need package survival meals to use against the Empire. So I'm going to say do until we've always got 80. Oh, I should really do it times four, shouldn't I? Um, let's go ahead and paste that in. When that's finished, and when we've got um, Sharamus basically injected with these, can he do it himself? T take Lazarus Mac. Uh, okay. Now what? Oh, there we are. Right, cool. So I think that means uh, as long as it remains decent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stay dominant till the host falls unconscious. If this happens, I'll activate and start to heal all wounds. Now, I think that means if he's instantly killed, it won't actually save him. So if they somehow blow his head off clean with a mortar or something ridiculous like that or with a cannonball, then obviously it won't resurrect him. I would love to see Sharamus take one of those cannonballs to the chin, though. That'd be a real test of his blunt defense. Actually, they're so cheap, it probably wouldn't hurt to get everybody injected with one of those, would it? Do until X, where X is... X is five. It's just two medicine, one sphere, and one advanced component. That's not massively expensive in our colony. Um, granted, we are now completely out of plastic, and we can weave some more at the cost of steel, so we've got to be very careful about how we balance things here. But if we give that to Halitos and so it gets knocked out a lot as well, given that they're going on the mission too, that way we've kind of got a nice little safety net there, just in case things get really, really out of hand. Is that take Lazarus Mech Injector. There we go. And we'll make sure these guys are going in Cataphract Armor as well. Um, <laughs> got the helmet on that one, but no art. Uh, where is the Cataphract Armor? There it is. Let's make sure. I don't know why they're holding it to there, rather than the... It's like they have to put it in storage and then take it to the armor racks. They can't just take it straight from... It, I'm telling them to throw it on the floor, right? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Let's tell them to throw it on the floor. That way the Hornobots might take it straight to the armor racks this time. A lockjaw is doing what for who? You stay away from Go. Uh, well, you know who we've got to send in. Sharamus versus Giant Land Whale with big old spiky teeth. This is going to be an interesting fight. <laughs> All right, let's get in there. These things generally tend to be pretty lethal, but I think at this point... I think at this point, that lockjaw should be turning around. Get him, boy. Let's see what we've got. Have we, have we actually fought anything yet with... Oh, of course we have. We, we fought... Oh, God. Really? That's all All of them. Oh, this, this one as well, then, is probably going to go berserk, right? Yep, okay. Um, You might want to haul ass. You might want to get out of there, Chief. Okay, Rose is safe. How are we doing, Sharamus? Wow. It actually did somehow. What, lockjaw disease? What the hell are you talking about? Lockjaw disease? What? What do you mean, lockjaw disease? Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what does that mean? I had no idea they gave you diseases. Uh, the disease they transmit, which affect victims with a moderately fa- Oh, they, they give him lockjaw. Uh, excuse me. He has a fucking compression jaw. How the hell does that work? Rubbish. Stupid game. Okay, you know what? Get, get some revenge. How have they damaged him? What is their armor penetration here? 11%. <laughs> <laughs> How have they hurt him at all? That's ridiculous. Uh, they've bitten him on the shoulder, apparently. They've cracked his shoulder somehow. Absolute madness. Sometimes the combat in this game genuinely blows me away. Okay, so Pierre should be... I, I forced Pierre to do it because he was just pissing around, to be honest with you. Should be working on the meals. When that's finished, we'll ship them away. Send them on their secret quest to try and bring back up, sir. So let's give Edward Crosby's armor rack to Halitos, and let's give Pierre's armor rack to Sir Gets Knocked Out a lot, and then whichever ones are unassigned, we'll give those to, again, the people missing them. So that is, if I give it to Edward Crosby and Pierre, right? There we are. Uh, and that one is for Pierre. Okay, so let's get you guys equipped, and let's send you off as soon as possible. So go ahead and equip from armor rack. So Get no Gets Knocked Out a lot has the Charge LMG. Halatos has the plasma gun. I feel like it's quite a nice combo. That plus Sharamus. We've basically got all of our bases covered. Great DPS against an armor target. So then we've got incredible DPS versus armor targets too. And then Sharamus, which is good DPS versus um, basically everything, to be honest with you. All right. There's our hit squad. The the the, the ups of recovery squad. I feel like we're studying it in very much the wrong order here. Hang on. There we are. That's what we're after right there. Let's do it, team. Market value of 25,000. I genuinely think Sharamus' market value was worth more than Jilp's entire colony. That's absurd. 
Um, oh, we've got an iron husk beer leg as well there. Very nice. Right, send them with the survival meals. Let's send them all 45. It's 25 days of food. That should be more than enough. Should be more than enough to do whatever the hell we need to do in terms of planning to uh, get Upsa out of there and then also walk home. All right, off we go. Bring him home. Bring him home. And also destroy the orcs while we're there, obviously. Um, give us a gift. Give Sharamus back to them as a gift. Here's your orc back. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in at the edge then. God, that would suck if you clicked the wrong button. I assume there's a confirmation on that, huh? <laughs> Accidentally give this mega orc back to... Back to his people. That's a hell of a peace offering, isn't it? Mike, I'll talk about playing a long con. Where are they on the map, then? How long is it going to take to get there? All right. I don't know if we're even going to find Upsa here, but I don't know where else he would be. Also, we've got to try and take him alive. So I guess we'll just have to get uh, Halatos and get Starts Outlaw to try and punch him down. Because obviously, if we send Sharamus in, Sharamus is going to cut through him like a hot knife through butter. So we've got to be very careful who we actually send to try and extract him here. Maybe he's a prisoner. Maybe he's a prisoner. Maybe we'll get here and he'll be the leader of the orcs. Wouldn't that be a plot twist? <laughs> oh, there we go. Relationship. Mother of... Oh my god, Sharamus' mother is here. Orc peasant Rin. I thought that was going to tell us that Upsa was here. Oh my god, look at the orc base. Very nice. Um, oh, that's a lot more than I expected, I'll be frank. Where is Upsa then? Upsa, Upsa, Upsa. I'm sure we'll find him somewhere. Whoa. I genuinely thought that was sets of cataphract armor then, but no, it's not. It's, um... Is that not the advanced helmets from a mod? Is that the vanilla... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, arm armor? Wait, we don't have anything that adds... I remember that that armor. It's like advanced armor from, from, a, from a mod set. Weird. God, that's what that's from then. Um, unless I'm going crazy, maybe it's something from the base game. Wow, they've got some strange things here. All right. Uh, let's see if we can spot him. If, if I panned over him... Feel free to scream at me, but it could be absolutely... Anyway, God, there's a lot more than I expected here, I'll be honest with you. Wow, this is pretty nuts. A challenge worthy of Sharamus. It's, it's just occurs to me how fucked up this is as well. We captured this man. We've completely transformed him into... into I mean, I say man, orc. We've completely transformed him into not really an orc anymore. And now we sent him back to slay his people. This is messed up. Also, because they are a slightly lower tech society, they've only got traps... Rather than some of the other societies, which will have IEDs and sandbags and turrets, etc. The Empire, I think, like I said, is going to be very interesting here. I can't see Upset anywhere. What happens if we destroy these guys and Upset's not actually here? Then where does he go? Huh. Well, we'll see what they've got after the fact. Was that Resurrector, mate? You've just got one of those lying around, huh? <laughs> That's insane. Okay, boys. Where are we then? Three versus an entire Orc city, basically. 66 versus 3. I mean, we had worse odds than that yesterday and still came out on top, so I think I'm alright with this. Okay, Alatos, if you don't mind, a gun might come in more handy there, Chief. Let's take it slowly. I think, obviously, we'll let Sharamus take the uh, take the center. I think this area seems like a good zone to try and get into their base, because it's where their defenses are a bit more of a complete mess. Plus, if we die on the way in, there's some coffins ready for us. Alternatively, rather than being cowardly and trying to break through and, and dig through, how's this for an idea? Yep, I thought that would work. Okay, uh, one condition needs ending. That is absolutely phenomenal. This is a phenomenal state of the game that we are at. Absolutely fantastic. Who cares if Sharamus hits trap when he can just rip through them like that, as if they were nothing. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, um, we've got again. We've got to keep an eye out for Upsa. Oh god, they seem to be mobilizing a little bit. We've got to keep an eye out for Upsa just in case we accidentally kill him dead with a plasma rifle, because that would suck. Um. Well, if we do, there are plenty of Resurrector mechs around, after all. What are they doing? Do they even know we're here? Sneaky Sharamus sneaks up on unsuspecting Orc and kills them all dead. That's a hell of a story. Okay, let's get you guys behind sandbags, then. We could use the sandbags against them. I feel like down here is a really good place to get involved in some combat. So stay. Let's try and avoid detection as long as we can. Sharamus hit... Yeah, okay, we really don't care about that anymore. Thank you very much. All right. Uh... Are they bothered by us being here? Sharamus? Sharamus, brother, is that you? Do you recognize me as your good friend, Rog? No, Rog. There is no Sharamus here. I mean, there is no Danak here. Only Sharamus, the Orc Slayer. Uh, are they bothered by that? Oh, they're attacking our colonists. Right, there we go. Okay, we want to pull them back so our guys can get some damage in. Holy shit, there is a lot of them, though. 
Bear in mind, there were, we only saw, what was it, 66 of them outside. So, God knows how many are actually indoors here. Let's send you down here to try and stem the numbers a little bit. And then these two can hang back and gun them down from a distance. But they've already broken a shield. That's a bit worrying, I will admit. Although they're using bows and arrows. Surely that's not even going to penetrate his armor. There's no way in hell that can hurt them. A 17 melee is quite nice as well. Good luck, boys. Here we go. So it gets knocked out like I can't even hit because apparently they are far too far away. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. We might have to pull Sharamus back a little bit then. Okay, come back, come back, come back. He's sucking up a lot of damage here. Good lord. Um, I'm really not sure whether to just let him stand in the center and then resurrect him if he does go down. Or pull him back a little bit and try and use the other guys to help out. Because again, he will just die from this many bruises. Even if they're not actually penetrating his armor. But now six hours, what the hell have they done to him? To get him... Burn off fresh. Sharamus' left leg was shattered by Helotos' plasma shot. Hoisted quite literally by our own petard here. The weapon we built to rip apart Cataphract armor. Well, on the plus side, we know that works. Oh, for fuck's sake, really? Helotos, we're gonna... We are gonna fight. You are a moron. Talk about friendly fire, for fuck's... Oh, God, he's down. His armor broke already. Are you serious? That was brand new Cataphract's armor. And it's broken from a bunch of... How does a knife break Cataphract's armor? Okay, well, this has gone horribly. So much for our secret mission to test out the... To test out the power of uh, Sharamus. My god, we'll be lucky if we even get these boys out of here in one piece. We have the advantage of quite a lot of range from our weaponry. So as long as we keep these guys moving... Rose has been attacked by a fucking panther. Oh, for God's sake. Rose, you've got to charge LMG for God's... How have you let this panther sneak up on you like that? Good lord. I haven't got time to be messing around with your panther adventures. Get out of here. Okay, as long as we keep these guys moving... And as long as we have... A decent amount of distance on these guys. We should be fine. I say that. There's, I mean, this supposedly pristine... I have a feeling Edward Crosby might be a con job. Yeah, I'll craft your cat's fright armor. No problem. I'm skilled enough. Goddamn liar. It's, made all, it's just all made of paper mache. He's embezzled it all. Unbelievable. I just... There's no armor strong enough for Sharamus. I like to think, actually, it was his bulging muscles ended up, uh, ended up shattering the armor. It is obviously more likely that Helotos' plasma weapon... Genuinely did damage the cataphract armor to such an extent that all it took was a few uh, a few punches from the orcs to, to, to thoroughly destroy it. Um, maybe we should lure them out of their base and like get them on some killing fields. The issue is if we fall back to here and we can't defeat them then, there's nowhere else for us to go. I feel like it's probably better to put some distance between us and them. God, he's again, he's, he's just going to get bruised to death. Man, the combat system is, is so strange, isn't it? Okay. Uh, how many of them are there left? Just shitloads. Absolutely shitloads. To be fair, a lot of these guys are downed. As long as we can deal with this unit first, then we're going and tidy up the stragglers. Um, don't worry, boys. You've only got to kill 28 orcs by yourselves. Oh, there we are. So he got knocked down, but the Lazarus Mechanites immediately kicked in. Okay. Good shit. Good shit. So what does it mean by they're healing him? Are they? Do they heal him just so that he gets up? Or do they heal him so that... Brilliant. Well, so much for that, I guess. Uh, moderate. Okay, he's back up again. So they don't actually resurrect. They just help him if he gets knocked down until he gets back up. This is a complete waste of time. Uh, Sharamus is back up, though. Oh, God. What the hell is even that? They've got a big statue of a scyther. That's insane. You people are mad. Um, I don't know what Sharamus is doing right now, but we'll... Dying. Dying is the simple answer. This, this has been a complete mess. This has been a... I don't know how this operation went so badly. It's all down to Halitos. Should we send reinforcements? I don't know that I can justify it. Because if we then... I I mean, you know what? I've got to try. You know what? I've got to try. It's it's time. Military tab. Order the fire support. Where did we buy fire support? Was it was it you? No, it wasn't that one. Uh, Was it you? Ah. There we go. I've got to do it. I just hope to hell. This doesn't hit, so it gets knocked out a lot. I don't know the, I don't know what sort of radius we're looking like here. Don't worry, Alatos. Fire support's coming in. Come on. Come on. Any, please, please. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, my God. It's got a big radius. I'm so sorry, so it gets knocked out a lot. Oh, that skimmed him. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, The game's not very happy about that one. Okay, there we are. There we are. We're good. Holy shit. That cost us 3,000 silver as well. Don't forget. That was that was no cheap 
thing that we just did there. Oh my god, the game is so unhappy at me right now. <laughs> what a complete mess. Have to call in high-end artillery support to deal with a bunch of orcs. Because it turns out, no matter how many implants you put into Sharamus, it's not enough. There is no armor capable of stopping him. Oh, God. All right. We, we still need to be a bit more careful then. We still need to be a bit more careful. Okay. So the question is, what the hell do we do now? How's Sharamus doing? Bleeding out in one hour. Realistically, it's going to sound weird. We kind of want him to die so that we can use one of the resurrect mech serums on him. There's one there. Um, what about the others? They're all coming for Halitos now. They're quite... Oh, God. We're going to have to call in some more support. Damn it. <laughs> so much for that. I'm actually genuinely so fucking disappointed that this many episodes of work and they defeat him via bruises again. The Cataphrite armor breaking so quickly as well. Obviously, a lot of that will be down to the fact that the plasma rifle just happened to hit him. But again, they're massively inaccurate. So we've got to uh, account for things like that. But even then, I mean, one plasma shot was apparently enough to take him down. The Empire might just end up annihilating us even now. I assume they have those plasma weapons, of course. Um, right, let's call in some squads then. I've, I've got to do it. Um, let's deploy the smaller level squads. De deploy the squads. No squad. Uh, oh, right, right. Sorry. Okay, so who have we still got to sign then? Get in here. Please, for the love of God, help me out. I don't know what I've ended up deploying here. Basically, whatever we could afford. I just need to give Halitos enough time. It's a bunch of naked orcs. They they do have weapons, though. We're fine. Uh, all of you, just just start just start killing. It's it's naked orcs with shotguns. It's an orc civil war. They just watch. What are they doing? They're just watching them. Please open fire for fuck's sake. They won't attack their own people. Have I been betrayed? Oh god, poor Halitos. They're not firing. Look 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 look. They're just they're just friends. They're just please kill them. Come on. Charging the enemy. They're just walking away. Oh, Halitos, I'm so sorry. This has been an absolute mistake. Um. That's like the most disappointing thing I think I've ever seen in the whole of RimWorld. It was a bunch of orcs. They're using bows and arrows against the most advanced technological character we've ever built in the whole history of RimWorld. And we we had not we do we didn't even kill half of them. Well, unfortunately, Sharamus's combat AI simulation was was a complete waste. Uh, we we've we've learned a lot from this, and we've learned that we are not prepared to fight a bunch of stinky orcs, let alone fight the Empire. So let's en engage Operation Up the Ante. Exoskeleton armor, dermal plating, cyclops visors, laser detection, and muscle wires with a limit to all so that we make a full set and we are going to go through person by person and I'm going to upgrade this entire goddamn colony. I'm going to strap them into cataphract armor. I'm going to turn them into machines and we are going to give them all plasma rifles. War crimes be damned. That is, that is not acceptable. So... Here's the plan, then. We are going to upgrade every single person in this goddamn colony, whether it kills me. It will take some time to do it, naturally. Which is why we're going to do it person by person. Sharamus was a good test bed, but we've, we've proven that it's just not enough. It's just not enough. To peel back the cut, of course, Rimworld's, Rimworld's combat system uh, doesn't really allow for super soldiers because of exactly what we've seen, because the bruises will stack up. So instead of making one super soldier, we're going to make 11 of the fucking things. So here is my suggestion. There is a module in the vegetable garden mod set, which allows you to grow resource plants. These plants, when grown, when you, pre when you processing into resources, they're very slow. They don't provide a huge amount of resources. But for us and our pretty extensive system right now, where we are kind of just really wasting this massive opportunity we've got, we can use it to grow resources, which in turn we can turn into our super soldiers. It will take some time, but it will be consistent. That's the main thing. With the trade caravans, we can't guarantee. With the tithe, we can't guarantee. It might be good in combination with those to have a flat level. That way we can do this kind of ridiculous super soldier project. Because I am really disappointed that episodes and episodes of struggling for resources, we've ended up with a Sharamus that's kind of shit. Shitamus is what I will officially rename him. Unless we can get him some backup. So, 
I'm thinking about we'll go for the Magic Bogan mod again. I'm not, I'm against kind of the Quarry mod, the Omni Core Drill, the Industrial Craft Driller as well. They're all so, so overpowered when you start working on Bionics. But plants can't be, because no matter how many Bionics you throw at something, that's not going to affect how fast plants grow. So I think that could be quite a nice compromise. Plus, I never tested the mod out before, so I figured we might as well enable that and give it a go. Tomorrow, then, we're going to grow a vegetable garden. A vegetable garden which will allow us to finally make the super soldiers we've all wanted me to make the entire time in our hearts. It means I could cut 30 episodes out of this series that we spend fucking around trying to find still. But hey, thank you for watching. The episode that finally broke me was this one. Finally, I've, I've turned my back on the, on the self-enforced rule of absolutely no resource generation because that just really is so disappointing, isn't it? Watching our super soldier go in and get killed by a bunch of people with bows and arrows. Thank you to Dante, Mordekane, Huey Longdong, Bacon Kitten, Scary Scurvy, Scared Blueberry, Gogola, Sarabi, Anthony Gawley, Goatfather, Chris, Bad Burrito, Thurum 6, and Alex for their support. The insane tier levels on Patreon. Big shout out to these guys for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well goes out to Dranmere, Jeebus Crust, Cass, I Am Sagatair, Demon X Jester, Swifty21, Blood for the Blood God, Asaro, Shlomo, Hated, Night Rouge, Jessica Smith, Tonosta, Magister, Magister Militum. Hey, I'm Alex and Genji Zerka for their support over at Patreon as well. Big thanks to you guys. But I am now out of patience. I want these goddamn super soldiers.